Since I started working for Unity, I've had the luxury of using different sorts of high-end PCs, regular PCs, and three different classes of laptops for game development. And I've been comparing the prices and performance on each of the machines to see which one suits me the best. So in this video, we're going to talk about if you should go for a laptop or stick to a PC for game development and in which scenario one would be better. If you have any questions about this topic, feel free to ask in the comments section and join our Discord server by going to the link in the description or simply going to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm because we're over 12,000 game developers in there, which is still crazy to say, but you can learn a lot from those people. Not just me, but you, you can chat to me and stuff like that, but you can ask your questions and receive help. But first and foremost, this video is sponsored by Synthi Studios. Synthi is a studio that publishes amazing assets on the Unity Asset Store. They are the ones who publish the very popular series of asset packs called Polygon. And as you know, Unity is now hosting a mega sale on the Asset Store and a bunch of Synthi's assets are a part of that sale. Most of their assets have been deducted by 50% in price, which is insane. And they're all incredible packs that are highly usable in various types of games as the models are well optimized and each pack contains lots and lots of content. If you want to check out more about Synthi Studios and see what assets are in their sale, make sure to go to the link in the description. And now with that being said, let's talk tech. So just a little bit of backstory of me, I started off by using a PC for game development, which was my old PC with the build of an Intel Core i3 for a processor, Intel HD Graphics 4000 as for graphics card, and I think it had like 4 gigabytes of RAM or something like that. And it was obviously not great, but at the time it handled the game engine Unity pretty well. Now the thing is, this kind of build would not be able to handle Unity or anything else generally speaking, as well as it did back then. Because a few years ago, the technology had not grown as much as today, and even game engines didn't support very high graphics. Now of course, that's not the case. Um, like if we look at Unity for instance, we have ECS, the Entity Component System, things like HDRP, the High Definition Render Pipeline, and a bunch of other features and techs for making games with great graphics like that's the whole point. Now these kinds of features and the graphics themselves of course require a lot of performance from the hardware itself. And I'm just pointing this up and bringing it up because it's a question that I receive so many times now that like people just ask me like, hey Sam, can I get this like really cheap processor and a really cheap RAM and you know the same kind of price tag for the graphics card and make a good game and it's like, I believe personally that this is kind of like an investment into your projects because the computer you're going to get is literally the machine you're going to use for development and it's going to be used for your work, technically speaking. So buying something, I'm not saying that you should buy a $100,000 worthy of PC, but I'm just saying if you're going to spend $5,000 it's a investment. And if you're gonna spend $1,000, it's still an investment. So right now I'm using a PC with 32 gigabytes of RAM, Intel Core i7 for processor, and Nvidia GeForce GTX 1070 for the graphics card. I'm able to run all things I want very smoothly, code very fluently, and have no flaws in the hardware side of things. Like my PC, and that PC specifically costed me about $1,600 I think, and I got it for about two years ago. Now one thing that my job at Unity requires me to do a lot is to travel. Like I get to fly around quite often and I end up wanting not to waste my time while having a f like 7 hour or even 12, 15 hour long flight to the United States or any part of the world but actually be productive under that time. Now for both my job at Unity and Saiku on this channel, I obviously use Unity to work on videos, which requires a lot as a whole. So basically it requires me to have a recording software like OBS running in the background and actually recording with the set encoding settings, meaning that it takes a lot of performance on the computer and requires a lot from the computer. It also requires me to have Unity open at the same time while I'm actually using it. And when I do that on a PC, I normally have no issues. However, for laptops, I can't say the same even if the price is sky high on the laptop. Like for instance, I've used a laptop from Dell with an Intel i3 processor and Intel graphics card, not sure which graphics card it was exactly, but it was not a high class one and it had 8 gigabytes of RAM. I felt like that 
that RAM was too little for me as I have multiple softwares open at the same time. And even if you don't necessarily record yourself working on your games, you will still need a bunch of other things open like Chrome or any other browser and probably Visual Studio and things like that. The processor i3 was not enough for me either. I felt a lot of lagging when I had multiple things open and compiling times were very, very slow for my use case. And the graphics card was not enough either, to be honest. I didn't like that in internally built-in graphics card, but rather wanted a different and more powerful model for when I want to do something else on the laptop, like play games or even make games. And, you know, level designing is also something that requires a lot. So I believe this laptop costed around $900 to get. It wasn't very expensive, but neither was it nowhere near what I wanted from it. So price really didn't make a difference, to be honest. And then I tried a razor blade after the Dell laptop. Now, the razor blade I tried was a 2017 model with an Intel Core i7 as processor, which is really good. NVIDIA GTX 1060 as graphics card and finally a 16 gigs of RAM. Now, this was the laptop I found most complete, relatively speaking, if we compare it to say my main PC. It is a super powerful machine. I mean, it's literally marketed as a gaming laptop in, at the end of the day. Now, my problem with this one was not in performance, but it, ha it was the noise that it produces. And this machine, I mean, to be honest, this machine sounds a lot. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, if you run Unity in a complex project like Book of the Dead or Mega City, especially, it sounds like the laptop will take off in a minute. You might be thinking to yourself that I'm nitpicking, but consider that I wanted to use this in an airplane or on the bus and on the train, basically on the go, right? Given how much it sounds by just running a project that's heavy, it would be impossible to use it amongst other people as it produces way too much sound. Even at home, like my parents were worried of how much it sounds and if something might happen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the laptop is bad, don't get me wrong, like Razer did nothing wrong. It's a fantastic laptop, but it just sounds way too much. And if I'm gonna use a laptop for working on my projects in like the airplane, I don't want to have people staring me down. I'm sorry. I just care about that kind of stuff. I don't want to be the, the guy who disturbs everybody else around him. Right now, the razor blade that I had costs about $2,200 for the base model. And that is a lot of money considering that it sounds too much. And <laughs> I don't want to pay that much money to disturb people. That's not, you know, you know what I mean? That's not my point. And right now I'm using a MacBook Pro, the new model with an Intel i9 as processor. 32 gigabytes of RAM and Radeon Pro 555X as for the graphics card. This is also just the one terabyte model, which is still a lot, but it's not the maxed out one. Um, this model though, specifically costs around $5,000, which is an insanely high price tag. And to be fair, this is still my personal favorite of all the other laptops I've used before because it is a MacBook. I mean, to be honest, I like Apple, I like their products, I like their design, and this one is actually powerful enough to let me do my job. It doesn't sound a lot either, but still, to be completely honest, for $5,000, you would be able to get an absolutely crazy gaming PC without issues. So considering that this laptop costed so much, I honestly would have expected more. Now, that's not to say I expect more out of this laptop, but I expect a lot more from that price tag. Like this price raises the standard immensely of what you should get. I could literally buy a car in Sweden for that price. <laughs> not a superb car, not like a BMW, but one to take me from point A to point B with no issues. And it's good for editing though. Like I can record Unity with OBS while working without having insane sounds produced. So that's good. And I can use this to work while flying too because it's not too big and neither is it too noisy. So that's good enough for me. But then again, for this price, my dude, you could get a lot more in the PC. So what is actually my point here? I basically, I don't think that a laptop is necessary for game development. And if I were the casual indie developer right now without a job at a company and without a YouTube channel like this and just be doing my own thing, I would have a laptop if I were to travel a lot, but one which I can use to do my emails and soft work as what I call it. Like I wouldn't use it to open up Book of the Dead or this huge project I or my team and I are working on, right? And that I would work on from my main PC, which I would invest more into. Like here's an example of a nice, very nice PC build. Intel Core i7 for processor, 
RTX 2080 for graphics card and 16 gigs of RAM here in Sweden. You can get this around for $2,200. I'm not saying that's cheap, but compared to the performance you get through this gear to a laptop like let's say this MacBook Pro for $5,000, the PC is so, so much better. And RTX 2080 itself is like one of the top class graphics card you can get right now. And it's RTX, the latest tech that's also making its arrival into game development more and more now. And look, downgrade that RTX 2080 for graphics 80. My Swedish jeans, dude, that actually reminded me of me saying gigabytes instead of gigabytes in one of my previous videos. Oh, the cringe. Anyway, downgrade that to a GTX 1080 and you land on about 900 hundred to eight thousand dollars with the same processor and the same RAM that's very cheap for what you can get in performance and keep in mind these are Swedish prices and Sweden is known to be like very expensive in its tech I mean there are Swedes that literally travel to the US to literally just get new tech like iPhones which is crazy in itself I'm not saying that I'm doing that but you know what I mean like that's that's how expensive we are so to be quite honest, if I didn't have the luxury or the advantage, I wouldn't use these high priced laptops. Like you honestly don't get that much in return for the price tag, even if the laptop's insanely good. Like I'm very, very happy with my MacBook Pro for instance, but is it an RTX 2080 PC with a complete package perfectly suited for developing big or small games? It's not, you know what I mean? It's not. Anyway, so that's pretty much my opinion on using a laptop or a PC for game development and to make games in general, including like Blender, using 3D modeling softwares and level design. If you have any questions to me regarding any of this, because I have a lot of experience now using a very set of different types of computers and laptops and comparing them to each other, let me know and ask in the comments and join our Discord server, by the way, with over 12,000 game developers. So you can hear from even more people with different experiences. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for new videos. Speaking of new videos, I'm actually planning on making like a full review of game development on the MacBook Pro that is, you know, with an i9. So if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments as well. I would also like to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons, Richard Stans, Kupla, Flu Joey, Glassville Entertainment, Couch Ferret, Bearded Die, Academy of Games.com, Terrorrift.com, John Funnel Grid, Andreas Brillin, Samuel Rivello, and InfinityPBR.com. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. Alright, so with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video once again, and I hope to see you in the comments section and in the Discord server because I'm gonna be super active there. So, see you guys there, have a good night, and peace out.